National Championship hopes reside with six talented hoop squads, and two of them are set to meet in the South Regional Final. Kentucky has lived up to its number one overall seed. The Wildcat powerhouse, led by a group of fresh faces, has been unstoppable in its quest for Kentucky's first national championship since 1998. Baylor has made a bold statement this year with a powerful inside presence and a perimeter game to match as the Bears find themselves one game from their first Final Four since 1950. The winner advances to New Orleans, Baylor and Kentucky next on CBS. city of Atlanta, Georgia. There is the Georgia Dome, which will host the 75th Final Four next year. But in the meantime, we've got two final pieces to the puzzle to settle here on this Sunday. The last two to make it to New Orleans. Here it'll be Kentucky against Baylor with the winner advancing on to the Big Easy to face Louisville next Saturday in the national semifinals. Hello, friends. Jim Dance. Hello, my partner, Clark Kellogg. Baylor, Kentucky. When you hear that comment, but what do wow. you think? I'm talking about up-tempo, athleticism. It should be a fun one to watch them. Both of these teams like to play in the open court. What are you looking for out of the Baylor Bears here today? They got well, they a 30-win season. Jim, they can attack from a lot of different spaces. Brady Heslip is an outstanding three-point shooter. They've got presence inside with P.J. Three, Perry Jones the third, and Quincy Acey had 20 points and 15 rebounds on Friday night. And let's go to our technology here, virtual madness, and there's Heslip being highlighted. Yeah, he's highlighted because he's sizing up the guy he's going to have to lay some wood on to free up Perry Jones for an alley-oop pass. The back screen has slipped big screen on small. I'm sorry, small screen on big. And then PJ3 at the rim. And this is a rocket launching throwdown. Off the baseline, out of bounds play. Back screen again, Heslip and Quincy AC all alone. Watch out, Kenny Freeze. <laughs> That's not the kind of picture you want to be in. I'll tell you, the floor is still quaking after that one from Friday night. <laughs> Let's talk about the Kentucky Wildcats and what are you looking for out of them? Speed to burn. This is a balanced team. They get at you in the paint. They go over the top. They can knock down perimeter shots. There is no weakness with this Kentucky Wildcats team. It's especially offensively. Tremendous balance and versatility and a lot of different weapons. All right, Clark, little equal time here on the virtual madness for the Wildcats. Want to show you the team speed from offense, retreating back to defense. That's Deron Lamb who took the shot. He gets back quickly to defend the play and then watch how quickly Kentucky comes right back at you. They won't convert here, but wanted to give you an indication of how fast this team goes from offense to defense to offense. It's Baylor, Kentucky, and it's next on CBS. to the national championship and New Orleans. We've got Baylor, Kentucky coming up and let's go over to Tracy Wolfson. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. If Baylor's going to pull this off, they're going to have to do it without those neon jerseys because they're the lower seed. The NCAA said that they've got to wear the black ones. The coach, Scott Drew, very superstitious, did ask the NCAA if they can stay with the neon jerseys, but the NCAA denied them. Remember, they 4-0 in those jerseys, but they're going for the blackout today, guys. Oh, there you go. All right, Tracy. A lot of blue in this building, as you might expect. And the Bears and the Cats will tip it off in a moment. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Buffalo Wild Wings. AT&T. UPS. 
and by Scott Trade. These two programs have met six times. Kentucky's won all of them. They also, by the way, met in the 1948 national title game. And there is Scott Drew, who's directed this Baylor program really from the ruins to now a premier program. They were one step from the Final Four two years ago, and here they are again. One win away from making it to the promised land. Jackson, who's had 10 assists each of the last two games. Heslip, the sharpshooter. AC, the dunk machine. Miller and Jones. Jones, they all can be such strong contributors. They all average in double figures, as does the first five for Kentucky with Teague Lamb, Kit Gilchrist, Terrence Jones, and Anthony Davis. For head coach John Calipari, brought a team to the Sweet 16 for the fifth consecutive year. Memphis on to Kentucky, had the Cats back to the Final Four last year. The uh, Wildcats' first trip to the Final Four in 13 years. Here is the Baylor road to actually South Dakota State had an early 12-point lead. Baylor came back to win. Heslip hit nine threes in the victory against Colorado. And then a 22-4 start on Friday night. Baylor in its win against Xavier, winning by five. The Kentucky Cats. The Wildcats, the number one overall seed of the tournament. First, Western Kentucky. And then Iowa State. And then that matchup, and it did not disappoint. What a scene it was. Indiana and Kentucky in a shootout with the Calipari side winning at 102 to 90. And what a performance, I might add, from the free throw line, Clark. 35 out of 37 by Kentucky in that game. 95% and that was really a turning point particularly in the second half as I reviewed that game from Friday night. The fact that Kentucky was able to get into the bonus relatively early and then cash in huge in keeping Indiana at bay. Les Jones, Ryan Percy, Mike Stewart officiating and the outside jumper drops for Anthony Davis who by his lofty standards had a rather pedestrian line against Xavier with all that foul, uh, against uh, Indiana with that foul trouble. Nine points, 12 rebounds, and three blocks. Most <laughs> people would love to have exactly. that. Exactly, and he did it in 25 minutes, Jim. Bounce pass over to AC, who waits and just lays it in. No dunk this time, but he'll take the two. And no question about it, and that's going to be one of the key things to keep an eye on. Can Quincy AC do damage in the paint? against a very formidable front line from Kentucky. AC had 20 points and 15 rebounds in the victory against the Musketeers. Good matchup here, two of the top forwards in the country. Jones lays it over to his running mate Davis, who has the first four for the Kentucky side. Nice assist by Terrence Jones. Terrific assist, and that's what every Kentucky player can do, Jim. Drive and throw it at the rim for Anthony Davis if help comes up the lane. Stripped away by Tig. Up ahead, Jones. AC chasing after him. Oh, that was a... Big body blow. Hold on a minute. Just going to call. Are they just going to call it a foul here? Well, look, it looks like Mike Stewart is indicating. We'll see, but it looks like he may be indicating flagrant one or review. I think it's review. Let's take a look. Good effort. Good play on the ball. I think that's just a hard foul. Unfortunate that Jones takes a spill, but in my estimation, that's a hard, clean foul. Two shots, no flagrant. That's how I'm viewing it right now. Well, the replay didn't look nearly as violent as it did watching it in live action. And no, of that's, course, a, that's a play it, on the ball, contact yeah. with the body, and an unfortunate spill into the back of the back basket support. And AC is so powerful, so strong. And anytime you collide with him, you, you're, you're going you're to see some tremors. And Terrence Jones isn't a featherweight that's now. That's right, true. I mean, he's about 250 LBs as well. I think that's two free throws and let's play. Uh oh, the way Scott Drew is responding. Doesn't look happy. Well, and it doesn't. Boy, that's right on the line for me. Flagrant on the line for me. Flagrant one foul, and this is again how 
It's all been clarified. And I've, by the way, you may not agree with that call, but I like the way now there's been a better understanding of a flagrant no one question. versus a flagrant two as the NCAA head of officials, John Adams, and all of the people involved in this process, I think, uh, did a very smart thing here with this. I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, it clarifies and simplifies what an F1 and F2 are. And again, in my estimation, the officials have to make the judgment in full speed time without the benefit of replay. They did review it. And in Mike Stewart's estimation, he thought it must have been excessive contact there. That's the only way because it wasn't above the shoulders. Lamb baseliner. And that is Baylor underneath with Miller getting it back to the bear side. An offensive foul clearly Quincy Miller. Sometimes when you're too upright handling the ball as a big guy, you have a tendency to lean off with your offhand. See, he's not low enough. As you saw, as he stood up, Jim, that's when he pushed off. If he'd have stayed low, I think his base would have given him a chance to make his move without pushing off. Miller, a decorated recruit by way of Chicago, same city that delivered Anthony Davis to the Kentucky Cats. So there's history with those two having competed. That ball bounced off of Jackson's leg, so no backcourt violation. As Teague raises it up, 12 on the shot clock. Miller blocks it. Boy, not a good decision by T to challenge Quincy Miller, who was able to get a beat on him from the three-point line in. AC takes it inside, and there's the block by Davis. Up ahead, Lamb back to Davis. This is the dunk. It looked like it had been executed to perfection. Now numbers for Baylor. Inside and two for Jackson. Lamb coming back with it to Davis and somehow back of the rim. That pass was just to, for the speed that Davis was running, that pass was just not quite on target. Just a tad off. Still should have made the play. Oh, and Miller has the position underneath. Of course, what made it electrifying had all been set up by the block by Davis and almost got it the other end. Here's AC driving in. Hold on. That's going against Davis. And the right call. Anthony Davis was not in legal guarding position. Excellent take by Quincy AC here. And there you see Davis clearly sliding in to the driving AC. Never had established both feet on the ground in legal guarding position. So AC will shoot two free throws. The senior out of Mesquite, Texas. And that victory in the Sweet 16 round gave Quincy AC and his fellow seniors, talking about Anthony Jones and Fred Ellis, the winningest class in Baylor history. That was the 100th win on Friday night. And AC was talking about it after the game, how meaningful that was to him to be the first group to ever reach that figure. That's a big number, Jim. A meaningful milestone for AC and his classmates. Never blocks it. As Jones gets it back over to Teague, 18 on the shot clock. Marcus Teague has already had two shots of his rejected. He's going to have to be selective in when he penetrates against this long front line of Baylor. We'll be thinking about it the rest of the game as Kid Gilchrist goes inside. And that is pulled down by Jones. Again, the shot bothered by the Baylor left. Miller, three-point shot. Yes, right over Davis. Couple of Chicago kids squaring up with that one, and it's Miller who has a couple of blocks. It's the shot. Kentucky has its biggest deficit of the tournament so far. Baylor off to a good start. Going to circle the ball. 6-9, Quincy Miller has it. Circle Heslip out at the three-point line, and Pierre Jackson going to go to the rim. Because Heslip is at the three-point line, Terrence Jones fades to him and doesn't realize that nobody is picking up Jackson. And well done in the open court. And yeah. there's RG3, the Heisman Trophy winner from Baylor. And his football coach to our right there, Artie Bryles. Baylor, the only team still in the NCAA tournament of the six still alive to have uh, won a bowl game this year in football and still have an active team going for the championship in basketball. They actually have two active teams going, don't they? Yeah, they do. The women's team, of course, is just uh, number one from the start of the year and undefeated in the final eight.
Darius Miller. A.J. Walton on the floor, Jim, and this again makes Baylor a much more effective defensive team on the perimeter. They go smaller and more active, although Heslip is the guy who went out instead of Miller, which is the case, which was the case on Friday night when A.J. Walton came in. Kentucky's now missed its last seven shots. That one was halfway down for Davis. Yeah, that was a good look. Last eight points belong to the Bears. I mentioned Darius Miller on the floor, number one for Kentucky. The seniors had a great tournament so far. He sure has. He's been splendid shooting the ball. And, and it came over to help influence that missed jumper by Quincy Miller of Baylor. Good Gilchrist. Tough shot gets it to drop. You can see Baylor after Makes is content just to walk it up. They'll run when the opportunity presents itself, but after Makes, they want to play in the half court and try to take advantage of a good size of the size they have up front. And that's off of Jones. Quincy Miller has five rebounds and a couple of blocks. What was that? Clark, let's put you back in charge of the virtual madness. Well, we highlight Quincy AC against Anthony Davis. He breaks contact, and then he's going to help on the drive. And any time that happens, Kentucky is going up over the top, and Anthony Davis is going to the rim. Well executed by Kentucky, and not bad defense by Baylor. You really want to help on the drive, but you've got to know Kentucky wants to throw that lob and maybe stay home more against a team like Kentucky, make that driver finish the shot instead of having that passing lane. Kentucky at inbound, trailing 10-7. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, and Tracy Wolfson here at the Georgia Dome. Kessler back on the floor, replacing Walton. Kid Gilchrist. I'm sorry, replaced Quincy Miller because Walton is still out there defending. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Greg, Greg, Kenny, and Charles, and Kansas State head coach Frank Martin. We'll talk with Louisville's Rick Pitino and the regional final star Russ Smith about getting to the final four. Plus, uh, we'll have a visit here with NCAA President Mark Emmert. Dr. Emmert will be here. And a Naismith watch presented by AT&T coming up on AT&T at the half. Jones, three. And Walton may have shoved the Kentucky player aside to get that rebound. He did. It wasn't a lot of contact, but it was enough. Anytime you get an airborne player and you nudge him below the waist, that really is an advantage gained, and the officials were right on top of it. Good call in the second foul on Walton. Second and eight seconds. Yeah, he fouled out the other night for so, the fourth time this season. So Deuce Bellow, freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina, will take his place on the floor. Bellow's minutes have increased here in the latter part of the season. In his last five, he's played 75, 79 minutes, Jim, in part because of what he brings in athleticism at the, and at the defensive end of the floor. And Bello had a 13-point performance in the Big 12 final against Missouri. That's a charge call. And who was in the middle of it? Deuce Bello. The young fella moving his feet. Oh, he did a little bit of a selling job there, no <laughs> doubt. A little extra drama. Selling, acting, whatever you want to call it. Yep. It's the first on Kid Gilchrist. Turnover's really the only blemish for Baylor. Four assists on four made field goals, and there's another one. Well, there it is. And that's going to be a reach-in call on Bello. Trying to cut off Miller. First one on Bello. You know, you're playing this supreme Kentucky team. You can't afford careless mistakes to give them more opportunities to hurt you. You've got to be very efficient as Quincy Miller returns for PJ3. Perry Jones, the third, going to take a seat. Got to be sharp. Ball fakes. Sharp. Speedy passes. Nothing lazy. Teague hits a three to tie it at 10. A freshman from Indianapolis. At 14 the other night and seven assists against the Hoosiers. He's been outstanding in the tournament, Jim T. 2.6 to 1 assist turnover ratio, 17 points a game, 6 assists per game. 
I don't know why people were complaining about his play. This kid has been outstanding running the club, particularly the last six weeks. Yeah, led him in scoring against Iowa State with 24. You could tell Baylor was out of control there. Up ahead, Davis outstretched arms, gets it, and dunks it. Scott Drew might need to regroup. Turnovers piling up and igniting this partisan Wildcats crowd here in Atlanta. Baylor's gotten flustered the last two trips. And they've been stuck on 10 points now for over four minutes. And Quincy Miller lost control. And the arrow will stay in their favor. The Bears will maintain it. It's Country Music's Party of the Year, the Academy of Country Music Awards live. That's next Sunday, only CBS. Quincy AC is going to go to the bench to match Davis's departure. Jim, this is where Baylor has to run one of its best plays to get a quality shot. 14 seconds on the shot clock, plenty of time, solid screening, player and ball moving, and I think Scott Drew wants to talk about it and make sure they get something good on this possession. Need to. Last seven points have gone the Wildcats' way. Kentucky by a bucket. It's time now for Power Aid, powering through. Look at Pierre Jackson. Very explosive dynamo. Leads his team in scoring and assists, as well as steals. He's been a huge difference maker for Baylor. Beautiful day here in Atlanta. Spring, of course, everywhere across the country came early. And in a warm weekend here, as a lot of the Kentucky fans, of course, and the Baylor contingent, not to underplay the effort they've made to get here from Waco, Texas. That's right. Take a look at Anthony Davis off to a pretty solid start. You see the shot volume plus seven in field goal attempts for Baylor because of the turnover differential. Six zip points off turnovers. Baylor has to squeeze the orange and get a good shot here. Yeah, they almost let the orange slip right there as Jones picks it up while in as Jones of Kentucky racing out with it. Wiltshire, the freshman from Portland, hits the three. He put on a shooting exhibition here on Thursday during the shoot-around. Unlike anything maybe I've seen from the outside. He has a terrific stroke, and now the confidence to go with it. Jackson trying to match it. No, and Jones has another rebound. And he's able to bring it out initially by himself, and that allows you to eliminate the need for an extra pass in transition. Kid Gilchrist takes the pass and slips past the defender for another basket. A lead of seven. Look at the tournament summary here. The Big East with Louisville taking charge all the way to the Final Four now, winning the West. Your Buckeyes are in for the first time since 2007 here in Atlanta, by the way. And five of the six remaining head coaches have actually coached in the title game. The only one absent from that would be Scott Drew on that Baylor bench. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to the Buckeyes. A strong performance in Boston yesterday to beat a very good Syracuse team. Well, how about the Louisville run? So uh, similar to what UConn did a year ago. Of course, UConn went five wins in five days at the Big East Tournament. Louisville went four in four. And on they go to New Orleans. And wasn't Coach Patino touched after that game? There's a jumper off the mark by P.J. Three. As Baylor continues this scoring drought, they had led at 10 to 5. The key here is Kentucky has picked it up and ignited. And there's Miller. They can just hurt you so many ways. Baylor just has to remain poised and get a couple of shots to go down and eliminate transition baskets for Kentucky. Miller had a foot on the line, two-point basket, nine-point lead. He has made 15 of 23 field goals coming into this game during the tournament. Good go, Chris. Again, all the way down the floor for the basket and a double-digit lead. And Scott Drew and the Bears have no answer right now. Charles Barkley talked about it in the studio, Jim. 
If Baylor wasn't careful, we could get away from him. Big basket there. AC and the basket counts with a free throw to come, ending a 16-0 run. The Wildcats are indeed going wild. Anthony Davis with that throwdown. Here's a little game summary. The Wildcats hit three of their first 11, but they have hit now six in a row. And you highlighted the big difference, the six turnovers, which just ignited the scoring run at the other end. Exactly. Anthony Davis running the floor extremely well there. Wiltshire off the bench, an excellent three-point shooter. Kid Gilchrist off a turnover, able to get out and go. And that's John Calipari reacting, not to his team on this significant run, but when Baylor got its last two, and it was the first in a while. There you see the run over the four minutes and one seconds that it elapsed. And finally, Quincy Acey not only got the basket, but drew a foul on Deron Lamb as well. Yeah, that basket by Acey is included in that little run you saw on that ground. It was 16 unanswered, and now Acey off the Lamb foul. Makes it a three-point play, so the life of a coach on that bench, <laughs> the emotions change by possession. It's terrible. They sure you do. can have a 16-point run, and all of a sudden, it's the end of the world. <laughs> Especially when he's defended by A.J. Walton, who has two fouls and has given up about five inches to him. Really tough matchups for Baylor now with A.J. Walton, Pierre Jackson, both smallest guards. You've got Brady Heslip out there as well. And the Kentucky guards have size and length and quickness. Heslip hasn't even taken an attempt so far. Ball on the floor, last touch by Kentucky. So Baylor will inbound with nine on the shot clock. A reminder, you can watch every game live on your computer, your iPad, iPhone, or select Android phones with NCAA March Madness Live. Visit NCAA.com slash March Madness for more information. So again, they got a, a short shot clock here. Mm -hmm. Possession never changed hands. And there's A.J. Walton. He's back out. Got Drew trying to find a combination that'll work. But so far, nothing going Baylor's way after a good start. Jackson gets a favorable roll off the rim. Cuts it to eight. Now, can they get stops here defensively? Turnovers fueled that big run by Kentucky initially. But with Baylor scoring the last couple of times, they've at least had an opportunity to set up the half-court defense. Now, can they execute in it? And Davis. He can hit that shot all day long. And if you're trying to help out on Kid Gilchrist posting inside by backing off Davis, then he'll make you pay from that 15-foot area. There's so many ways they can hurt you, Jim, because they can shoot it. They all pass it. They've got size and drive by Bella. Jones may have gotten a hand on it. Kentucky setting a new single-season NCAA block record. In the victory against Indiana, they were 317 coming into this game. They took the all-time mark away from the Okafor-led team of UConn back in 2004 mm -hmm. that won the championship in San Antonio. And there's a foul against Jackson. His first. Was it a block well, by Terrence Jones? Just Bella, check it out. Yeah, let's see if he got a piece of it. Just got a fingernail or two on it, just enough to bother it. And so that, Yeah, that would be considered a block yeah. in my stat book. And they will here, too. It's official. And there it is now with the running total at 320. All-time single season record, college basketball history. Led by Anthony Davis is now, I might have 170 with the one added in here today. Real dilemma for Baylor, Jim. They're trying to match up with this big perimeter of Kentucky, but their best offensive players are smaller. Kid Gilchrist hits the three. He's already totaled 10 in the first 11 minutes. Jackson has an open lane, gives it up. Miller is blocked as, again, Jones makes a play. They challenge everything at the rim, Jim, and they do so with poise and excellent timing. One of the things that Kentucky does so well is they really don't foul a lot. For all of the block shots, they typically don't get into a lot of foul trouble. I mean, Anthony Davis has only been Dairy Queen once. Yep, that's really not an issue. They really only play about seven players. 
Vargas got a few more minutes the other night, but he's had games where he hasn't had to be called on off the bench. It's not usually an issue. Saw a little bit of it in that first half in Indiana. Casey pauses, misses the short shot, and that's off of the hands of Kid Gilchrist. Casey may have gotten away with an offensive foul there, but I like his aggressiveness in trying to attack the rim. Devon Lamb comes back. Kid Gilchrist to the bench, and what a an explosive start he's given them. Same kind of performance he had the other night. Mm -hmm. Made all of his free throws in a 24-point effort. 10 of 10 he was from the line. Also gobbled up 10 rebounds, six of them offensive. That's Anthony Jones on the miss. Out with it, Teague ahead. Lamb and a foul. And that's going to be the second on Jackson. Team foul number seven, and don't forget, coming up later today in St. Louis on CBS, Kansas and North Carolina. What will the Tar Heels come up with in this one? What will Marshall do? Will he play? And of course, you expect that game in St. Louis is going to be a very big partisan Jayhawk crowd there on hand, like we have here in Atlanta with the close proximity of Lexington. Yeah, this is and kind Kentucky. of a quasi home game for mm -hmm. Kentucky based on all of the blue here and how much time Kentucky spends here as part of the SEC. But looking ahead to the game this afternoon as Lamb misses a rare free throw. You know, you think about it, the Kansas Jayhawks guards have not played at a high level recently. Tyshawn Taylor, Elijah Johnson have not shot it well, but they're capable. Up front, Robinson's a force, and Withy is a real game changer because of his rebounding, shot blocking, and shot changing. And Lamb, you won't see that much, Jim, where he misses a pair. How about the team missing now three on the game after only two in 37 attempts the other night? So I think they're one out of four. And then you think about Carolina, just to finish the thought. They'll play better because they've had a game under their belt without Marshall. And I would expect Harrison Barnes to have a stronger shooting game than he did the other night. He was 3 of 16 at one point. Kentucky's hit its last nine shots from the field. Lob to Davis. Beautiful. Jones has done that twice. Jones twice. Just really laying it on the rim for Davis to finish. And Kentucky's hit its last 10 now from the field. So many interchangeable parts for this Kentucky team, Jim. Baylor facing its biggest deficit of the tournament. 15 down. I mean, when you've got a play made like that, big to big, that's unguardable. Ball tip back outside. Tough pass, but Anthony Jones has it. Going to be a reach in call on Teague of Kentucky. And that'll be Teague's first. Kentucky shooting 62%. No wonder shots like this all game long. Coverage of the NCAA men's basketball tournament is sponsored by Coors Light. Dove Men Plus Care. Liberty Mutual Insurance. And by LG. Jim Nance with Clark Kellogg back here in Atlanta. We call this big to big above the rim for the Wildcats. Penetration by Terrence Jones. Defenders come up and help. AD all by himself at the goal. Mark it up. 7-12 to go, Jim. And what must Baylor do now to find a way to chip away and get back into this game? Well, I'm going to tell you what. They've got mass matchup headaches at every position. They don't have any matchup advantage anywhere on the floor. So how do you get Kentucky out of its rhythm? You've got to execute offensively, and you need some shots to go down. You've got to be ready to take available shots like that and knock them down. Now you get back in defense at, at, at your defensive end, and you've got to be aggressive and make Kentucky uncomfortable. Pressure, I think Pierre Jackson has to be a little more disruptive at the defensive end. They're playing this zone now, and Kentucky is such a good shooting team and has size advantage on the wings that they can shoot over the top of it if it's not active. But I think the beginning of defense is offense. 
And Kid Gilchrist got in the paint and really got almost an uncontested shot. Yeah, that's too soft. And that's and I, 11 straight makes. And I've noticed that with the Baylor zone and watching tape, that sometimes there are a lot of holes that allow for shots that are high quality and too easy to get for the opponent. So they've got to throw some sandpaper into their defensive approach. Anthony Jones saves it. Jackson wanted the launch, but Kit Gilchrist closed in on him. Anthony Jones, shot slides off the rim, and coming away with it again is Anthony Davis. Oh! Kentucky is going to be called for the charge here. AC, Quincy AC doing a nice job holding his ground. That's the third time now that Marcus T has made a poor decision in the open court. He did it earlier twice, driving on bigger guys and having it blocked. And this time he made up his mind prematurely and spun himself right into an offensive foul. You can see Quincy AC clearly outside of the restricted area arc. And that's basically what Rod Strickland and John Calipari are talking to Marcus Teague about. Has two fouls on Teague. That's one way to get back in the game if you're Baylor. Get another quick foul on uh, on Teague, although he'll sit right now. But again, this team is really good defensively without fouling. Jim. Pass slips through the hands of AC. And you lose Teague. Okay, that's your starting point guard. So you move Deron Lamb over to run the point. He did a lot of that last year and is very capable and comfortable in small stretches of time running the point for this team. Five and a half to go in the half. And Kentucky has not missed a shot in over nine minutes on the clock. That's amazing. The NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues. Regional semifinal action tonight on ESPN2. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern as Kentucky battles Gonzaga. And for more information on the Women's Championship, go to NCAA.com. Hesla picks up his first foul. Two shots coming for Kid Gilchrist. Baylor at 18 fouls. Yes, exactly. That's going to be a problem. Anytime you're trying to come back, you want to have that stat in your favor, not working against you as Quincy Miller comes in and Quincy AC will take a seat. Kentucky will be able to milk this the rest of the half, Jim. There's no reason for Kentucky unless they have full blown layups in transition. They should come down, exploit their matchup, attack the rim, and see if they can either score easily or draw fouls the rest of the half. Well, they've doubled up Baylor now. At 34 to 17, this is the largest lead of this regional final. Barry Jones, PJ3, they're going to double him when he puts it on the floor, and then he was sloppy with it and lost it. Yeah, Davis helped force that sloppy action by reaching in and tapping it away from him. Kid Gilchrist keeps making plays. Well, it's really a pick when you look at the Kentucky Wildcats. Any number of guys are making plays, but he seems to always be in the middle of everything they do, offensively and defensively. He brings such energy and focus and enthusiasm to the game on a regular basis. That's why he's emerged as, I think, this team's leader, quite honestly, Jim, even though he's only a first-year player. Well, he hits the front end of a one-and-one. One. As you said, 10 of 10 the other night at the line. Both again. Inside of five minutes. One side of the fair so far in Atlanta. Jackson again. Nowhere to go. Nothing there. So you really got to trust your offensive sets, your teammates. Can't try to do it on your own against so much size. Miller, top of the keys, off the mark, and it's Miller of Baylor with the rebound. Maybe an opportunity, nope, not in transition. Kentucky back, no numbers. That was the first miss in 10 minutes. No, no shot, no shot, right here. 10 minutes of clock action, about 25 minutes of real time. Right. And Kid Gilchrist whistled for that one. His second, and AC's coming back on the floor as is Wiltshire of Kentucky. And with just a six-team foul, so one away from the one-on-one. 
Shots you got to knock down, PJ3. And tapped out to Lamb. Richard. It's a back out high with 4.10 to go in the half. No rush. It's 35 miles an hour for Kentucky the rest of the way unless they have a wide open transition opportunity or drive to the lane. And Baylor doesn't really have the ability to match up enough at every position to apply defensive pressure. AC whistled for that, his second. Kid Gilchrist has 17 points to lead the way. Back to virtual madness. What do you see here, Clark? Well, Pierre Jackson going to get a pretty good look at the three, but then he's kind of undecided as to what to do. He hesitates, then he tries to gamble for a steal. He's in between instead of just retreating back. And once that ball is pushed ahead and Kid Gilchrist has an open lane, forget about it. But once you take that shot, if you don't have a clean rebound, actually you should be getting back if you're the guard when you take that shot right away. There you see. Baylor's total points only 17 fast break points for Kentucky almost equal to that. Mm. It's been total domination by the Kentucky Wildcats. And again they've got so many ways to hurt you if you don't execute on offense and make shots so you can get your defense set. They're going to run it down your throat if you turn it over. They're definitely running it down your throat and that's been the case. Nothing really good has happened for Baylor after the first four or five minutes. Mm -hmm. Had that lead at 10 to 5. And then they hit a drought that yep. lasted over five minutes. Had another drought that went over three minutes. And they're currently in one that's approaching four minutes. That's not a good recipe for competing against a high caliber opponent. Multiple droughts of over three minutes. Kentucky. Has scored the game's last eight points. And they're jumping out on Heslop, not giving him any room to look at a three-point shot. This is his first attempt of the game. And Wiltshire got a piece of the handle, sent him to the line. Get the latest gear for your team at the official store of the NCAA. Find great hoops merchandise at NCAA.com. Wiltshire's first. Baylor in Kentucky actually played for the national championship back in 1948. It was Adolph Rupp's first national title as Kentucky won the championship matchup against Baylor, coached by Mr. Bill, they called him, Bill Henderson, 58 to 42 in Madison Square Garden. You wouldn't think Baylor's history, this was only the seventh year they've ever been in the tournament, that they actually were in the Final Four in 48. In fact, the title game and back, back again in 50 in the Final Four. Look at this passing down low. Jones. And Davis puts it back up. But Jim, that all created because you have a real advantage when you throw it in the post to whoever Pierre Jackson is trying to defend. The defense has to overreact and help, and that opens up those long front liners to play volleyball. This is a missed shot, but Davis right there. Impeccable timing and pretty nifty finish here. Is you have to know where you are upon retrieving that errant shot. And this kid has such poise at both ends of the floor, does Anthony Davis. Second foul on Lamb, one and one. Pierre Jackson. Young man's a junior out of Las Vegas. All Big 12 performer. And there's Davis again, doing it in a lot of different ways that you didn't have a chance to see if you watched him for the first time Friday night against Indiana. And Jackson hits them both. Jackson, by the way, coming out of junior college last year, College of Southern Idaho, won a national junior college championship, reduced his last two schools to Baylor and Creighton. We saw that very, very good Creighton team, mm -hmm. Coach McDermott. And his son Doug's going to be back next year. It'll be a strong team, and very nearly Pierre Jackson was a part of it. They were North Carolina's victim last Sunday in the third round in Greensboro after beating Alabama. Bob Wiltshire. Turn around too strong. And Jackson. Oh. And off 
the hands of Kentucky. I like that shot by Jackson, the quick hitting three point opportunity in transition. They're going to need to try to get a couple of those to go. And if you're Baylor, you're thinking about, hey, we're down 20. Let's get something positive going over the next 146 seconds here and see if we can go into the locker room on a positive note. It doesn't have to be much, but it needs to be a little something here. Aloy Vargas has come in for the first time for Kentucky, number 30, down low. He's on Jones. Just a little glimmer of hope, you're saying? Yeah, he needs to knock down a couple of shots. Good look for Miller right there and too strong. And that's off AC. They have five minutes now without a made field goal. And that's terribly deflating, Jim. As a former player, I mean, you're out there giving it an effort, and Kentucky is basically stiff-arming you at every stop. And then you don't have shots to go to kind of fuel you a bit. It's hard to stay engaged defensively against an elite opponent when you're not doing anything at the offensive end. There is Miller with a three. Looks down and out, but again, Davis says, let's try this again, U35. And again, I made the point, Baylor just unable to really apply any kind of disruptive pressure to Kentucky because the matchups are in favor of Kentucky, particularly on the perimeter. Jackson is quick enough, but he gives up size and may have forced a turnover there. He did. Yeah, he bounced it off the knee of Lamb, so it's going back to Baylor with 118 to go in the first half. Nice job by Pierre Jackson. That's just the third turnover of the game for Kentucky. Beautiful pass. And has got his dunk. And a few times Jackson has been able to get into the lane under control with both feet under him. He had four dunks against Xavier. That's his 245th of his career, his rim rattling career in Waco. But I think I just saw what the adjustment has to be for Baylor. A lot of pick and rolls turn Pierre Jackson loose and see if he can just create havoc at the offensive end. And then they're about to knock down some threes in the second half. Miller hits the floater. And just about right on it, shot clock to game clock. <laughs> That's only half the equation, Jim. I've got an offensive strategy for Baylor. <laughs> yeah. and I, I don't know what they can do I don't defensively. Know. This is going to be one of the largest sign of going into that locker room at halftime. Trying to come up with a way you make up a deficit like this against a team everyone's regarded as the best in the country. And there's a block again by Davis. Four seconds to go in the half. Miller looks up, sees the time, feeds the corner. Lamb puts it at no. But still, Kentucky goes in to the locker room up 20. What a performance here by the Wildcats. We'll be sending it to the studio in New York when we continue on the road to the Final Four on CBS. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Pizza Hut. Lexus. Bud Light. And by Dish. It's been Kentucky in a romp through 20 minutes. And let's reactivate the little virtual madness technology, Clark. How about Kid Gilchrist, Michael Kid Gilchrist? He has 17 points on only seven shot attempts. And you can take a look at where he's made all of his shots pretty much in the paint, with the exception of one triple. And there it is right there. But he has been virtually perfect. I like your uh, your new shot chart. That was, that was very impressive, it. wasn't it? Yeah. That was really sweet. And for Kentucky fans, it's been about as sweet as honey the first 20 minutes. And Baylor's going to have to find some way, one, to get going offensively. I mean, 8 of 25 shooting, 1 of 4 from the three-point line. There's not enough offense. And somehow, I didn't think it was possible. Pass too high for Davis. I never <laughs> thought I would say that. This is the fewest 
points scored in a first half this year for Baylor. And obviously, when you're talking about a 30 and 17, they haven't seen anything like a 20 point halftime deficit as has slipped off on the three. And Kid Gilchrist comes out with it. There's another one. That's Jones bringing it down. Teague with the assist. We haven't had a regional final this lopsided since UConn and Alabama back in 04. That UConn team again that won the championship. It had the record for most blocks of the season. As AC scores on the inside, a record that was broken by this very same Wildcat bunch on Friday. You know, what you'd like to see from Baylor is just a little more grit and fight. I mean, they're being blitzkrieg, but no reason to just take it. There's a hard foul, and Perry Jones is coming up hurt. As is, uh oh. oh Both my. of them are hurt. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. There's the knee. He's clutching. Anthony Davis. Everyone regards him as a national player of the year. Taking a tumble here in the first minute and a half. They both were hurt. Jones coming over to try to cut him off on the drive to the basket. Boy, it just puts your heart in your stomach, Jim. There you see the collision. Oh boy, I think he landed very awkwardly. Yeah, you know, he's going to try to walk it off, and now the whole NCAA tournament, what's going to happen the rest of the way, has just taken a very, very frightening turn here for a moment. Here's another look at it. Drive contact. There you see the knee get the hip. And buttocks of Perry Jones yeah, the third. It's the way and then he the awkward land. It's the, the land landing, on the left I leg. Right. There I was a it, buckle. Yeah, but they're moving it there now, so that's a good sign without being right on top of it. It's going to head, I think, right to the locker room, oh, yeah. it looks like, for further examination. So let's. Actually, he's just trying to walk it off as opposed to. Heading to the locker room. Another positive sign at this juncture. We'll see. I would think if there's any question about it, you let him watch the rest of the way with the margin of that Kentucky enjoys here is the drive. Once the landing. Yeah, then the right left knee there. right there. Yep. There you go. You came down off of on that left knee. Slip. Baylor step back and tell you this whole building now is just going completely silent, understanding the significance of that moment and waiting and hoping as Jones is stretching out behind the Baylor bench. Darius Miller called for that foul. Oh, Jim, you sometimes see injuries that look worse than they actually end up being, and That's others right. don't look as bad as they end up being. So you just have to wait and see. Just as he's grimacing as they rub the ointment on the left knee. We were there last week in Greensboro, and he is really in pain. Yeah, he's agonizing. You can see it with the grimace. And you were starting to say about Ken last Marshall week, yeah. and how that really suddenly changed the whole view of how this tournament might be played out. Mm -hmm. But uh, and of course, Marshall still don't know exactly what he's going to be able to do the rest of the way. And but then to the point, about the national player of the year here. Right. And to the point we were just making, we didn't know that Kendall was hurt when yeah. he went down. It wasn't until after the fact. I mean, he came back and played some in that game, and it wasn't until after the game that we realized what the deal was. Well, here we go. We got a report from Tracy. Go ahead. Well, guys, Coach Calipari came over to Davis, gave him some words of encouragement, and Davis just looked at him. He said, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then the trainer went over to the Kentucky SID and said, he's okay. We're just going to do some further evaluation, guys. Well, let's hope that's the case. Yep. You know, 
That's exactly right, Jim. That's the best we can hope for right now, based on the information. Walton almost knocked it out. Capped up Terrence Jones and out the Hessler. And look, uh, Davis is actually going to go check in. He is on his feet, and you can hear the roar as the Kentucky faithful now can finally take a breath. And just listen as Davis will come back onto this floor. Jones whistle for that one. Well, adrenaline and youth is a marvelous thing as we see Davis waiting to check back in. You know all about these. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah, exactly. Put a premature stop to my playing days sure way back when. So that's why I always even grimace a little more when you see a young player go down in, a, in an awkward fashion and you start thinking about the knee. You can see he's still got a little gitch in his hitty up as Terrence Jones leaves. And that standing ovation to send him back out there. And just see just how he's able to move with uh, any kind of speed down the floor. His AC makes it an 18 point game. And I think part of it is I think he wants to see how it feels. And the coaching staff as well, since there's no indication there's any significant damage. You know, knees are such a tricky thing. You know, it, it kind of hard to make an assessment like that as, long, oh, no, as no far question. as he was, as long as he was down and as much pain as he was showing. You know, in this. Amazing so, to see him back out there. Sometimes you can hyperextend it a bit and it'll scare you and it'll cause some discomfort and pain and then the adrenaline's flowing and you get back out there and are able to work through it. Well, he wouldn't be out there if no, it was anything more right. serious. I would, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine him being out there if it was anything more serious than that. The foul is on Franklin of Baylor, seeing his first action. He comes barreling in on the shot on uh, Lamb. And picks up a second foul. Gary Franklin, sophomore from Santa Ana, California, is Coach Drew now goes to his ninth different player to see action. There he is. Franklin is a three-point specialist. Got he has some pretty he has pretty good size and can be a good defender, but hasn't played much at all recently. So I would figure there's a little rust on his game, but. Scott Drew trying to find somebody that can provide a spark and some offense. Baylor committing three fouls on about a five second span. And William gets them both. His first two points of the game. They haven't needed him to score today. Walton. As his pocket pick by Lamb, taken off past Franklin. Blocked by Jackson. And Kentucky resets. Scrappy play here, and Lamb delivers the goods from the corner. AC took a spill as he went to challenge that shot attempt by Lamb. And he went down, and he comes up limping a little bit. Boy, he's given great effort. Hasn't been a lot of production for the Baylor Bears, but you can never question the effort of Quincy AC. And Perry Jones, who was injured in that collision, is back out there coming in for AC. Here's that effort you spoke of. Oh, well, actually, he went down way before the shot challenge, it appears. So the three point basket now gives Kentucky its largest lead. At 23, and AC is able to score. Yeah, he's still limping. He's got all eight, does AC, of Baylor's second half points. Yeah, and he just asked to come out. He just indicated to Scott Drew he can't continue to go. So Anthony Jones is headed to the scores table. Actually, is already there. And we'll check in at the first opportunity. Lamb, one more time. And 
Jones. He's Jones is grimacing even as he got that rebound went back outside with it. Yeah, you're right. Anthony Davis doesn't look to be and Anthony Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere near 100 percent Jim. And quite honestly with the lead being what it is. Charge. Other than Anthony Davis wanting to be out there. I think you got to consider sitting him down. 51 30 from 20 at halftime to 21. We're back with Kentucky stomping Baylor at 51 30. And let's go back over to Tracy. Thanks, Jim. Two injuries to Port on the Baylor sideline. Quincy Acey came off during that break. He said it was his buttocks. They spent some time on the sideline stretching him out. He continues to stretch. Expect him to return, though. As for Perry Jones III, who hurt himself on the same play Anthony Davis did, it was a bruised hip. We did see him back in the game, guys. All right. Meanwhile, it was Jones. Coming over to try to defend on Davis. Davis is still on the floor. Well, oh, you never thought that you'd see both of them back in action just minutes later, but they are indeed. As the ball slipped out of the hands of Jackson, here's Jones. Hits the three from the top of the key. comes out with it with Franklin. Follow up Jones. Second try. No. We had two chippies. Wow. You've got to convert those needless to say. I mean you don't have many clear opportunities against this shot blocking team of Kentucky but the pressure being picked up now by Franklin and Walton but they are unable to do it without fouling. For Walton that's his fourth. In team foul number six. Deuce Bello will come in for Walton. It's interesting how Baylor makes it to the Elite Eight for the second time in three years, and the routing for them on this road to the Elite Eight exactly the same mm -hmm. when you talk about the seedings they faced along the way. Now, there weren't teams like the Power, Power Six Conference teams that were waiting for them. At every stretch of the way, by any means. But you know, to win a game in the NCAA tournament, as you know, it's a it's a fragile thing. That's right. Went through a same path as the trip to Houston. It is Jones is found. We've got an update coming out of New York. Let's go there. All right, Jim, Greg Umbel in New York with this update. The Carolina Tar Heels just arrived at the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis, and Coach Roy Williams says that Kendall Marshall will not dress for today's game against the Kansas Jayhawks due to discomfort in that sore right wrist. Jim? All right, well, it's only been a week since he injured it. You saw the highlight from the game against Creighton where he broke the wrist. He has AC's coming back on the floor. Of course, then he had surgery first thing Monday morning. It, it seemed almost inconceivable anyway that he could play four days later, much less six days later. So now the question is, can North Carolina survive in advance without him against Kansas? And if they do, they get to New Orleans. Is there any chance he would play even next week? Well, we'll see and find out. Obviously, today is the most important day for North Carolina. I think the Tar Heels will get better performances from everybody else. Zeller was magnificent in the win against Ohio. So too was Reggie Bullock. But it's each man has to raise his level of play against Kansas. That is uh, again Davis on the bench right now. I think he needs to sit the rest of the time. I mean I don't under, I mean this game is a 19 point game Kentucky in full control. There's no reason to risk additional injury to Davis. As Bellow. Going to give Baylor a nice highlight right there. Steal and a dunk. Now watch out now here, Jim. I mean, Deuce Bellow, the foul situation is not in Baylor's favor. They've got to be aggressive defensively. Jackson has the quickness to be disruptive, as does Bellow. Can they create havoc and disruption as Marcus T, guilty of an offensive foul, and it was Bella who, who was able to draw. Yeah. Teague's third. America's favorite geeks are back with a new Big Bang Theory Thursday only on CBS America's number one network. And just like that, Davis is on the floor again. Teague goes out with the three. Davis gets a little treatment. 
that caused some pain and he is going to see more action. Yeah, you know what maybe that massaging of the knee can help it get a little quicker back to normal so he's out there in a 7 0 run 7 1 run for Baylor here. AC nice move and shot with the left hand. From 23 down to 16. The jump shot. Lamb has seven. All in this half. Jackson with the three short. Bello tries to save it. He's out of bounds. And this Baylor team two years ago made it all the way to the regional final in Houston against Duke. Going through a 14 seed, an 11 seed, and a 10 seed. The two wasn't there waiting for it. Same thing here. Duke was the two in this bracket. Of course, Lehigh shocked them in the first game. That was officially called the second round, but there was no two in place for Baylor to have to go through. Pass. Lamb now got nine in the half. That comes from Miller. One thing about being down such a large amount is that even when you make a little bit of a run, all it takes is a basket or two from your opponent to push you back a step or two. You have to be close to perfect as Perry Jones III being aggressive, able to draw the foul on Anthony Davis there. Masters Live will stream exclusive video. Amen Corner, 15 and 16 and featured group. For more, go to cbssports.com slash masters and masters.com. Perry Jones. Get a couple at the line. And Walton, four fouls back on the floor. A Baylor team that opened the year, Clark, 17 and 0, and was ranked number three in the country until Kansas gave the Bears their first loss of the season. And that was in Lawrence, in a game where Thomas Robinson was terrific. Tyshawn Taylor, too. Well, Baylor starting to chip away a little bit. Now it's about sustaining the defensive effort and being able to come up with consecutive stops. Oh, Baylor was ready to take off, racing to the other end. And the foul was called on Franklin. It'll be a one and one coming out of the break. Teague and the Cats up 17. Baylor had three significant scoring droughts in that first half in Kentucky. One time peeled off 16 unanswered. Let's get back to your virtual madness. Clark, what have you discovered? Well, we're going to take a look at the Wildcats again in transition. Double vision because Teague has to see that Terrence Jones is behind the defense, and Terrence Jones had to see that Teague was looking his way. So well done again. A poor job of getting back by Baylor, but excellent communication between Teague and Terrence Jones as Jones was running that lane and getting to the rim. A one and one coming up for Lamb. Talking about virtual madness and double vision from the Wildcats there. This could be virtually impossible for Vay Baylor to make a run because of the foul situation. Kentucky in the bonus, Jim. At 11:54, when you're trying to come back, you've got to pressure defensively. You've got to gamble. You're going to probably commit some foul. So any kind of rally you make from an offensive standpoint can be thwarted by sending a really good free throw shooting team to the foul line. Unless you can miraculously pressure an elite level team without foul. It's asking a lot. A bunch. Showing a little more aggression here in the last couple of trips. And he'll go to the line. The basket counts. Yeah, he sure did. Right through the chest. Just bumped Anthony Davis up. And you know that left knee bothering Anthony Davis. So not nearly able to be as strong in his defensive stance there. 
And Perry Jones, the third, taking full advantage of it. Not taking advantage of the free throw. So it's still Kentucky 17 up. And Kentucky beat Baylor for the national title back in 1948. It was a 58-42 final score. Almost on it. Now Kid Gilchrist backs him in, and it's a charge. Jay ran him over. He didn't just back him in. He put the bus on top of him. Fourth foul, by the way, on Kid Gilchrist. Watch this now. Gary Franklin in good position, and then he just lowered that left shoulder and knocked him right out of the way. So the fourth personal foul on Kid Gilchrist, as you said there, Jim. Every trip has to be a positive offensive trip for Baylor. Either baskets or free throws. Can't afford empty possession. And Anthony Davis says, I don't think so. His fourth block of the game. Which gives him 173 on the season. Just so hard to get up over him, especially when you're coming from a 6-1 vantage point. How does that stack up in the school all-time stats? Previous best season of blocks at Kentucky. Andre Reddick, Riddick, and Mel Turpin each had 83 block seasons. This kid's at 173. Only 90 more as Teague gets it over to Miller. Takes the shot. Dipsy do a shot. Was a good foot over that rim. Boy, how about Perry Jones the third really waking up and showing a lot more aggressiveness. It's okay. one of the things people have wondered about with PJ3. He's such a really good teammate, a relatively young sophomore for his age. And sometimes he doesn't seem to bring the intensity that you'd expect, but it's certainly been here this second half. Bill Chris did not sit long with the four fouls. He's coming back in. That is Pierre Jackson's third. No, PJ3 has 11 for the game, nine and a half. Mm -hmm. And he committed to Baylor when he was a ninth grader. One and one coming here for Miller. Well, it's so hard, Jim, sometimes when you're on the lead as well as, as, as big as Kentucky had. To um, maintain your intensity and focus, Gilchrist headed back to the bench. Not sure what's going on there. Well, he's checking in, then checked out. Yeah. Apparently, there may be some blood somewhere. On the elbow. Yeah. Well, I was starting to make the point that you can get a little lax, complacent when you've earned such an easy big lead, but. That can play into the hands of the team trying to come back because you know they're going to be desperate, fighting, scratching, clawing. And I talked about it earlier. The being in the penalty will really diffuse this ability of Baylor to try to come back with defensive pressure. Fourth foul on Franklin and reminder coming Sunday, April 15th, a new police drama from Robert De Niro and Jane Rosenthal. NYC 2 2. Only CBS. Lamb is going to make up for a scoreless first half. <laughs> he already, already, has, already has, hasn't he? Yeah. Yep. Got 11. Two shots. And he is an excellent free throw shooter as A.J. Walton comes back in, Jim. Has looked. Kentucky's had him well covered today. Yeah, they basically put the mute button. On Brady Heslip. Got one point. And not even many looks. I can't recall more than. Just one. One shot. One missed three. Get him in the first half. That one rattles out. I'll tell you what, a couple of stops and a pair of threes or some type of scores, and things could get a little interesting. Trying to get it swung out of the double team. Perry Jones said, nope, I'm going to the hole myself. Almost got that one to drop. Davis called for the foul, his fourth. And 
This is the the one replay that is of the greatest concern. And he took a shot there from the basket support, getting that knee massage. And he's not missed a lot of time since he came down awkwardly on that left knee, Jim. And he's got four fouls. And will replace. No, they'll take out Darius Miller. And they'll put Kid Gilchrist back out there with four. 9.51 to go. Well, it's obvious that Baylor is going to play through Perry Jones the third. And he's been as extremely assertive in this half in the low post. Full court pressure here by Baylor, and this is close to five seconds. Timeout called by Kentucky. Biggest lead was 23, and it's down to 14. Foul issues on each side with four fouls. Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg, Tracy Wolfson here. This warm-hearted city of Atlanta is in mourning this week with the loss of Furman Bisher, one of Atlanta's all-time leading ambassadors to the world of sports and decorated sports writer some 62 years in his career with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. He passed away this past week at the age of 93, and he has missed at every sports venue around the land and uh, his absence will be certainly felt down the road down I-20 here in a couple of weeks down at Augusta. He was one of the all time greats Furman Fisher. Kentucky's going to face a little well not too much pressure as Baylor backs off after the inbounds pass. See Baylor really doubling up in the shot attempts column this half. Part because they forced a few turnovers. Kentucky has been content to kind of try to milk the clock a little bit. I don't want to do too much of that too soon. Still got an attack. Heslip is whistled for his third. Tonight on 60 Minutes, he's not only the best tennis player in the world, he's the most entertaining one, they say. Novak Djokovic, his life story, and it's an amazing life story. It's coming up tonight here on CBS. Boy, he's had some type of run here the last couple of years. Djokovic, one of my favorites on the men's tennis tour. He's got a lot of game and personality to go with it. Yes, he does. And the best is still to come. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's very much early in his prime yes. based on the typical shelf life of a tennis pro right in the sweet spot where well, you get your era you know yep. you're Federer you're Nadal and Djokovic is going to have his you've got to think as Jackson puts all on top of the cake but well, they need a couple of those to go down and Jackson a pretty good three point shooter on the year this ball going to stay with well let's see Mike Stewart Les Jones talking about it Brian Kersey going to get into the discussion as well. We're headed right to Baylor. So let's take a look at it, see if we can discern. It was hard to see there. <laughs> but those two that was comical, right? That was a classic. <laughs> Baylor keeps it, though, and I was starting to say Pierre Jackson on the season has been a pretty good three-point shooter. It was about 39%, but he's over five today. Jones and AC kicks it out. Walton just inside the three point arc. For the Perry Jones, the third. Here's a look for Heslip. This is his shot. And he hits it. Well, it's down to 13. Baylor has to be able to defend without fouling. So that's going to be the critical thing the rest of the way, in my estimation, Jim. Can they defend? Without fouling, force Kentucky to have to make field goals, not free throws, the rest of the way. Heslip's first basket of the game. And Lamb gives it up to Jones. Lamb, seven second shot clock. Jones. Walton lets go. AC rejects. Only two, two seconds. That's it. Go ahead, partner. What do you do here? Well, you've got to get a quick look, but excellent defense by Baylor. Nice job by A.J. Walton to let him go. 
and set him up for AC, and then AC let him get by him just a bit and then came from behind for the swipe. Now you've really got to make sure you don't foul if you're Baylor. Nothing unnecessary here. Make Kentucky catch it and shoot you, shoot it over the top. And the Baylor students feel a little optimism at the moment as Miller does not get it away in time. A had, violation. Had no time for the dribble there, especially if he was going to turn his back on the defender. These kids who, who for a hundred dollars got the round trip bus fare, two charter buses, 13 hours from Waco to Atlanta. They got the hotel room and they got the game tickets. If they would have thrown a funnel cake in there, it would have been heavenly. Oh, I'm telling you, I like the deal. Oh, that's a heck of a deal. Offensive oh. foul on Perry Jones. Baylor's not going to like this deal. This call is Jones is ready to take it to the basket again. We get the under eight timeout. Kentucky, 63-50, trying to get to New Orleans. Just going to finalize these final four brackets today here on CBS with North Carolina and Kansas coming up after this one. Kentucky or Baylor, of course, Kentucky leading by 13 at the moment. That potential Kentucky-Louisville yeah. national semifinal. You saw them play uh, earlier this year on CBS. I did see them back in December, right before the end of the year. Kentucky pretty much dominated the glass in that one, Jim, but Louisville, much different team now. I mean, that team under Rick Pitino. I thought when I was with them a couple of times in December, Jim, what stood out to me was how much they enjoyed playing with one another. They were going through some injuries. But Rick Pitino liked the fact that this team was fun to coach. They enjoyed playing for each other, they were with each other, and they were playing for each other and had good leadership internally. And they started to get healthier. And the improvement of Zhang and Peyton Siva has been outstanding. Russ Smith is a mercurial score. They just put it together at the right time, and that's a real big basket for Kentucky and an easy one, too easy. If you're Baylor, Teague breaks almost a five minute stretch without a field goal. Yeah, that Louisville game was on December 31st, 69 62. Kentucky yeah. won by seven. And that was Jones the third trying to hit from three and smashing in. The whistle. Jones with the rebound and Baylor zooming up the court. Good thing. Jackson. Shot doesn't drop. Now Kentucky wanted to take it fast. Big dip, Chris. Coast to coast. Big difference right there. Four point turnaround. Layup missed by Baylor. And then Kid Gilchrist able to finish. His first points of the second half. AC, left hander, no. And that is going to be on Jones. His third. Well, Baylor sunk to 23 down and then started to get a whole lot scrappier than we saw in that first half. Exactly. Hey. Showed a lot more fight. Got a big three here from Hessler to get it to 13. But since then, Kentucky has been able to score two layups. And you saw Scott Drew as Jones will be at the line. Scott Drew quit playing basketball at the end of his sophomore year in high school. He went to be, to Butler, and he was the student manager there for Coach Barry Collier. Boy, the Collier uh, coaching tree was pretty <laughs> significant. And when he was a student manager, talking about Scott Drew, the assistant coach to Barry Collier there was Thad Mata, That's right. who's already reserved with his Ohio State Buckeyes for New Orleans next week. Jones follows it up and dunks it down. That might do it. Three straight layups after Baylor had cut this lead to 13. Kentucky was a bit out of sync, and then they get three hoops at the goal, and that's almost, that's virtually inexcusable when a guy gets his own missed foul shot. Hard you just do. don't see that happen. And that wasn't even a long rebound, which no. makes it more inexcusable. It hits the ground, right. Turnaround shot by P.J. Three. Every time I say that, I want to say RG3. You know? so, I wonder if there are any like quarrels about, hey, wait a minute, that, that was my, that's my brand. It's, it's coming a little close. <laughs> a little title infringement. 
and that's going to be on Heslop. This year, enjoy more madness with Coke Zero. Text 2013 to 2653 for a chance to win a trip to next year's NCAA Men's Final Four, which will be right here in Atlanta inside this very Georgia Dome. And there is our G3. Figures to be a member of the Washington Redskins here in about a month's time. With their blockbuster trade with the St. Louis Rams to move up to the second position. Any chance he might move to the number you one know, spot? You never know, but it seems like Indianapolis is locked in to Andrew Locked Luck. in with luck. <laughs> well, no one, like you said, about a month. Of course, that coach Drew over there is such a uh, Colts fan with his uh, many years in Indiana. He named one of his sons Peyton. I just wanted to confirm, is that after Manning? He said, yes, he had a very good year that year. <laughs> well, what year didn't he have I a very good year? I was going to say the same exact thing. And that's called on Darius Miller, his second. It'll be a one and one for AC. When we bring in the end uh, of a very good career to a close here today. I love the way Quincy Acey as Bellow comes back onto the floor. How do you start your career? You know, you, you got to think you're a little bit nervous. And I know most of his shots are either dunks or right around the basket, but he made the first 20 field goal attempts of his career back four years ago. 20 for 20. That's What's amazing. so hard about this? <laughs> Those guys that could be in the gym by themselves could make 20 shots in a row. Acey with 22 today. 12 of them coming in this half. Well, he epitomizes what you want to see in consistent effort and production, Quincy AC. There he is battling Terrence Jones. Oh, he gave him the left side. Didn't drop step enough and played him. Didn't take away a strong hand. So AC picks up his third. talked a couple of times about the fact these two tangled in Madison Square Garden for the national championship. Alex Groza led Kentucky to the title. And you know, here's a great one for you. Of course, you trained in New York, and then they stayed around for an extra week, both teams did, to compete in the U.S. Olympic trials for the, for the U.S. Olympic basketball team that was going on to London, where the 48 games were. And they met a week later. Kentucky and Baylor then played in the Olympic trials, and Kentucky beat them again on that occasion by about the same margin. But five Kentucky kids went on to then make the U.S. team, and Jack Robinson made it from the Baylor team, and Mr. Robinson is here in that uh, whole fan base that you see behind us a number of times for Baylor today, watching his uh, beloved alma mater. And there's Jackson getting the shot to go. Take your time and execute if you're the Wildcats and make free throws if and when you get fouled. Before I get the Kentucky fans and you never mentioned our Olympians off those teams, off that team. We're proud of them. Terrence Jones scores. Cliff Barker, Ralph Baird, Alex Groza, Wawa Jones, and Ken Rollins. <laughs> Heroes of Kentucky in their first national championship team and Olympians as well. As uh, Kentucky inside of four minutes has had this double digit lead really most of the game. Yeah, it's been under control pretty much from the start after the little five and four and a half minute surge that Baylor had to start the game. It's been all Kentucky since then. Davis is calling for it and Jones was there again. Those two when they're together. Hold your breath for a minute. Jones is going to be called for the foul. 
been double figures since midway through the first half. Final 332 coming up in Atlanta. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Applebee's. Capital One. Warner Brothers Wrath of the Titans. And by Buick. Coming up on CBS from St. Louis, the Midwest Regional Final. Two story programs about to collide. Kansas and North Carolina, the final piece of the puzzle. Yep. Shaping up as a absolute monster gathering of four teams in New Orleans. And you're going to have as Kentucky's all but put this one away a Kentucky Louisville rematch and all that goes with that heated rivalry. <laughs> and on the other side of the bracket, you're talking about Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Against either one of those two. Right. I mean, it's perhaps a rematch with Kansas, this time with Jared Sullinger. The Buckeyes and Jayhawks played in Lawrence back in December. Jared Sullinger sat that game out. And if North Carolina is able to advance, then you've got the Buckeyes and Tar Heel squaring off. So, as you said, Jim, blockbuster matchups, no matter how you look at it. Assuming Kentucky doesn't have a monumental collapse, and I can't see that happening. Timeout call. In a 16 point game with just under, just over three minutes left. Timeout called by Baylor. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, and Tracy Wolfson. I noticed that Bob Dickus and Bob Fishman and our crew in the truck, they have not advanced Kentucky to this point <laughs> in the brackets. <laughs> they are still there holding on. A little bit longer. Yeah, this is a We'll moment. wait and take their cue. No question about it. With all of that experience in there, look, close to 60 years. Oh, my gosh. The longest running battery, if you will, producer, director in the history of sports television. That's all. Uh, he's up ahead. Kid Gilchrist. And Dave is still on the floor. Somewhat to my surprise, Jim, but obviously the folks on the Kentucky staff feel like there's no risk of further injury and that Anthony Davis is fine, so he's still out there. And perhaps like our producer director team, not quite thinking this one is over yet. Exactly. All loose. Jackson up ahead, Bellow. Kid Gilchrist went up with him and made contact. 2.38 to go. Will that be it for Kid Gilchrist, I think? Yeah. And there it is. You got him on the hand there. You saw it. What a first half he had as Kentucky. Absolutely took control of this thing from the opening minute. But 17 first half points ended up with 19. And he has fouled out. Kid Gilchrist against Louisville back again on New Year's Eve day. This is something I know that tape's going to be broken down a few times. Both teams, by the way, when did that game ranked in the top five in the country? You had, uh, in fact, Louisville was number four, 69-62. Kid Gilchrist had 24 points and 19 rebounds. Anthony Davis had all 18 of his points and five of his six blocks in the second half. I can recall in that second half, Jim Louisville continued to try to attack the rim and Anthony Davis has just had none of it. But as I said earlier, a totally different Louisville team now. Guys are really established in their roles, healthy, confident, and a fun team to watch. His numbers were career-high numbers for points and rebounds. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about that matchup, Jim, Kentucky Louisville and all its tradition and history and the intensity of the rival that rivalry that familiarity could be uh, 
Could have been yeah, yeah, I think it could be advantageous for uh, a team like Louisville. Well, that cradles it, ball comes oh. out. Walton, and he's to squeeze it up and in, but Teague has the rebound. Well, there's Davis in another collision. This time he got smacked in the face. Gary Franklin, the guy that committed that foul. Both guys, good gesture of sportsmanship both ways. And there you see the collision and the hand to the face. I'm just watching out for the legs yeah, every time. Yeah, now. I know. Everybody is. You know, you, you do have to wonder. <laughs> we'll uh, talk to Coach Cal after the game how much playing time and how long he kept Davis in there. Yeah, it's a bit puzzling. As I sit here and we've talked about it. I'm not the coach though. And I'm certainly not Anthony Davis. But I would have had him next to me when this game was under control as it's been most of this half most throughout most of the game really. Kentucky about to shoot at 71st free throw. You know coming into this game Jim they have taken 286 more free throws than the opponent and had made 231 more so no surprise that they really exploited that free throw line to their advantage. Baylor off the basket pulls timeout at 75 61 143 left. Another look at virtual madness here on the free throw line. One of those guys is supposed to block out the shooter. It's a basic fundamental in basketball. Does not happen at all. And Terrence Jones over the top of the smaller wall. I thought that ball when it first happened, I thought it had hit the floor. But Terrence Jones caught it in the air and then went right to the goal. With the dribble. Taylor has one timeout left. Coach Drew calling that one. Off a made basket. And that's a little too tight. A little bump by Bello will send Teague down to the other line to shoot two. Here are the highlights off of that, that meeting. It's going to be a, a rematch in the national semifinal. Yeah, Russ Smith was scintillating. He had 30. It was only a three point deficit for Louisville at halftime, Jim. But then Ken Gilchrist. Anthony Davis dominated action in the paint and the Wildcats pulled away in that second half. Oh well, listen to this news breaking news news from the truck Kentucky has been officially advanced in the brackets. I guess it's not official for another minute 37 seconds. But Kentucky Louisville talked about it on Friday night. You see it coming you know when you had your brackets I saw it early. <laughs> Is it possible no one could have planned it this way. But their three biggest non-conference rivals talking about Kentucky could in fact be on the road to the championship. Yeah. Still got, you know, North Carolina's one of those three. Of course, Kansas isn't a bad rival either. They've already beaten Indiana. We'll take care. Well, we'll be right back. From 68 down to five. Boy, it goes fast. And again, Kentucky facing the in-state rival Louisville next and potentially if they get past that game could be North Carolina. Those are the three they play. You know when we were in in Lexington early in the year you're talking about dropping one of those three rivals. Know. You know either know. North Carolina Louisville or, or Indiana and that, that has a lot of folks upset about that talk but you're going to start to I believe hear a lot about the rivalry run as I've dubbed it here the yeah. rivalry run to the championship. So the next leg of that is coming up and of course Louisville is going to present quite a challenge yes, for them in New right. Orleans. Plenty of headwind for the Wildcats from the Cardinals. We can count on that. December the third is when they played the 31st against Louisville. The highlights we saw December the third North Carolina. So that it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Carolina and Kansas. Mm -hmm. I agree there Jim Kansas again the perimeter players haven't played as well recently as they did during conference play speaking of Tyshawn Taylor Elijah Johnson going to get a little boost though from the from the bodies in the seats there. Today. Oh yeah it'll be similar to what we had here pretty much a home environment for the Wildcats. And ran a little long with that one that's what comes back in for Bella. It'll be the same in St. Louis for Kansas, I would imagine. 
But sometimes that can work against you, Jim, with the stakes so high being in an environment where you are expected to feel comfortable and have the fan support on your side. That can galvanize the opposition in a way that can be problematic at times, especially when you're an evenly matched opponent. Look at little Pierre Jackson go up and dunk that at 5'11 is what they list him. Yeah, that's generous. That's, that's a program height. Yeah, yep. that's a program height. But he never really had a chance to get to the lane earlier. And as you look at the Baylor Bears getting to the Elite Eight for the second time in three years and will have the season in at the same point in time. Terrific accomplishment though for this program. Well, Coach Drew is saying hey missed a couple more field goals here Kentucky and uh, you might have to sweat it out a you little might bit. Have to, might have to rework those brackets. <laughs> So Lamb, he just missed two. But what a job this gentleman's done right here. Mm -hmm. Brought in at the age of 32, nine years ago, to fix a broken program that had sanctions and, of course, the murder tragedy within the team. What happened before he had gotten there? It's just uh, out of control, and he came in, developed this now into a program that's twice in three years. Been just a game away from the final four. Making his father proud for sure. His father, of course, a legendary coach all those years of football, Homer Drew. He's here today. Jackson with a three and swishes it. It's it to 10. This is one that'll look a lot closer than it really was, and that may be an offensive foul on Deron Lamb. It is. And there is Homer and his wife, Janet. And Scott's wife is there as well, Kelly. Well, you saw him got the shoulder down and extended that chicken wing just a bit. Oh. Here's Jones. That would have been actually made things quite interesting had he made that at 40 some odd seconds. And I think he's got blood on his lip. Yeah, he does. I and mean, that yeah. was that that was that foul earlier when he got smacked in the face inadvertently by He by might Gary have taken Franklin. a shot on that defensive play there, Jim. I mean Perry Jones the third went into him pretty good. He may have taken a shot then. It's been a bumpy day for Anthony Davis. Has. He's taken a couple of spills, had that awkward landing on the left knee, but seems to be Actually, as he stayed out there, Jim, he's moved noticeably better. He's got his usual double double, and this the kind of uh, game you expect as far as blocks. He averages five a game, 16 and 10. Another double double. He's got the Wayman Tisdale Award. That's the United States Basketball Writers Association Freshman of the Year Award. Also, Player of the Year, the Oscar Robertson. Now, you know, I I I, I love Oscar Robertson. Mm -hmm. Great gentleman. I think he would even like it too. Just call it the Oscar. He won the Oscar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he won an Oscar. I'm not in. Uh, I could. I, I would vote for that. Okay. There I would you go. Vote with that. I would be fine with that. Quincy AC <laughs> heads to the bench, and Davis delivers the two. Well, the Oscar Robertson Award is for the National Player of the Year. Tremendous accomplishment for the freshman. And Kentucky swats away another shot. It's going to be for Kentucky. It's 109th all-time NCAA tournament win, which will, at the time being, right, right now, will give them one more this one NCAA win than North Carolina. Right, came in today tied. There's Quincy AC. You see the emotion. It's a combination of this season ending, but also the college career. Final game that he'll represent the Baylor Bears in. Never experienced that, Jim, as I left school a year early to pursue my dream of being an NBA player, but it's always really emotional for me to watch these seniors finish up their careers. Anthony Davis going to take a seat. He actually will have a Another game for sure next week in New Orleans, perhaps two. Jackson gets Wiltshire to commit. He's got another dunk. Yeah, we're gonna let Miller go. Kentucky 
Bowl's first ever NCAA tournament game was in 1942, and it took place in New Orleans. And now they're heading back. The Big Blue to the Big Easy. Kentucky and Louisville set for next Saturday. Ohio State will take on the winner of the North Carolina-Kansas game, which is coming up here on CBS. For Clark Kellogg and Tracy Wolfson, this is Jim Nance saying so long from Atlanta. Again, the Midwest Regional Final, Jayhawks and Tar Heels is up next. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports on the road to the Final Four. And we'll send you to the Capital One NCAA Tournament CBS Sports Desk after these messages.